This is BBC Radio 3. It's eight o'clock now and time for Drama on 3. Thomas Middleton and William Rowley's tragedy The Changeling was first performed at an indoor playhouse called The Phoenix on Drury Lane in London in May 1622, where it enjoyed immediate success. 18th and 19th century audiences, however, didn't find the play to their taste, and it wasn't until Tony Richardson's landmark production for the English Stage Company at the Royal Court in 1961 that the play was confirmed as a true classic. This evening's radio production, updated to the 1920s, features Anna Maidley as Beatrice Joanna and Zubin Vala as de Flores. The action takes place in the Spanish town of Alicante. As the play opens, Al Samero, a young nobleman, is puzzling over the fact that he's fallen in love at first sight. What he doesn't know is that the object of his devotion shares his feelings, but she's due to marry another man. "'Twas in the temple where I first beheld her, and now again the same. What omen yet follows of that none but imaginary? Why should my hopes of fate be timorous? The place is holy, so is my intent. I love her beauties to the holy purpose, and that, methinks, admits comparison with man's first creation. The place blessed, and is his right home back if he achieved. The church hath first begun our interview, and that's the place must join us into one. So there's beginning, and perfection too. Now, Al Samira, come. The wind's fair with you. You'll like to have a swift and pleasant passage. Sure, your deceived friend tis contrary in my best judgment. What for Malta? If you could buy a girl amongst the witches, they could not serve you such a lucky penneth as comes at God's name. Even now I observed the temple's vein to turn full in my face. I know tis against me. Against you? Then you know not where you are. Not well, indeed. Are you not well, sir? Yes, Jasperino. Unless there be some hidden malady within me that I understand not. And that I begin to doubt, sir. I never knew your inclinations to travels at a pause, with any cause to hinder it till now. But assure you will want to call your servants up and help to trap your horses for the speed. At sea, I have seen you weigh the anchor with them, hoist sails for fear to lose the foremost breath, be in continual prayers for fair winds. And have you changed your origin? No, friend. I keep the same church, same devotion. Lover, I'm sure you're none. Your mother, nor best friends who have set snares of beauty, I and choice ones too, could never trap you that way. What might be the cause? Lord, how violent thou art. I was but meditating of somewhat I heard within the temple. The seaman calls, sir. Shall we board your trunks? No, not today. It is the critical day, it seems, and the sign in Aquarius. Keep all on shore. I do not know the end which needs I must do of an affair in hand ere I can go to sea. <laughs> My lady. He's waiting for you. He keeps the time most faithfully. I'll prove it too. <laughs> you are a scholar, sir. A weak one, lady. We must not to see today. This smoke will bring forth fire. <laughs> How now? The lords of the Medes are changed, sure. Salute a woman? He kisses too. Wonderful. Where learnt he this? And does it perfectly too. In my conscience he ne'er rehearsed it before. <laughs> Nay, go on. This will be stranger and better news at Valencia than if he had ransomed half Greece from the Turk. <laughs> Which of the sciences is this love you speak of? From your tongue I take it to be music. You are skilful in can sing at first sight. And I have showed you all my skill at once. <laughs> <laughs> I want more words to express me further and must be forced to repetition. I love you dearly. Be better advised, sir. Our eyes are sentinels unto our judgments and should give certain judgment what they see. But they are rash sometimes, and tell us wonders of common things, which when our judgments find, they can then check the eyes and call them blind. But I am further, lady. Yesterday was mine eyes' employment, and hither now they brought my judgment where are both agreed. Both houses then consenting, tis agreed, only there wants the confirmation by the hand royal. 
It's your part, lady. Oh, there's one above me, sir. For five days past, to be recalled. Sure, mine eyes were mistaken. This was the man was meant me. That he should come so near his time and miss it. We might have come by the carriers from Valencia, I see, and saved all our sea provision. We are at farthest, for sure. Methinks I should do something, too. I'm meant to be a venturer in this voyage. Yonder's another vessel. I'll board her. If she be lawful prize, down goes her topsail. I am a mad wag, wench. So methinks. But for your comfort, I can tell you we have a doctor in the city that undertakes a cure of such. Tush. <laughs> I know what physic is best for the state of mine own body. Oh, tis scarce a well-governed state, I believe. I could show thee such a thing <gasps> with an ingredient that we two would compound together. <laughs> and if it did not tame the maddest blood in the town for two hours after, I'll ne'er profess physic again. <laughs> a little poppy, sir, were good to cause you sleep. I'll give thee a poppy the lips for that first and begin there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll discover no more now. Another time I'll show thee all. <laughs> Lady, your father is... Is in health, I hope. Your eye shall instantly instruct you, Lady. He's coming hitherward. What needed then, your duteous preface. I had rather he had come unexpected. You must stall a good presence with unnecessary blabbing. And how welcome for your part you are, I'm sure you know. You seem displeased, lady, on the sudden. Your pardon, sir. Tis my infirmity. Nor can I other reason render you than his or hers of some particular thing they must abandon as a deadly poison, which to a thousand other tastes were wholesome. Such to mine eyes is that same fellow there. The same that report speaks of the basilisk. This is a frequent frailty in our nature. Scarce a man amongst a thousand found but hath his imperfection one distastes the scent of roses, which to infinites most pleasing is, and odoriferous, one oil, the enemy of poison, another wine, the cheerer of the heart, and lively refresher of the countenance. Indeed, this fault, if so it be, is general. The scarce a thing that is both loved and loathed. Myself, I must confess, have these same frailty. <laughs> and what may be your poison, sir? I am bold with you. What might be your desire? Perhaps a cherry. I am no enemy to any creature my memory has but yonder Flores. He does ill to tempt your sight if he knew it. Well, he cannot be ignorant of that, sir. I have not spared to tell him so, and I want to help myself, since he's a gentleman in good respect with my father and follows him. Wilt never mend the scorn one side nor other, must I be enjoined to follow still whilst she flies from me? Well, fates do your worst. I'll please myself with sight of her at all opportunities. If but to spite her anger, I know she had rather see me dead than living, and yet she knows no cause for it but a peevish will. My father, sir. Beatrice Joanna, I came to meet thee. Your devotion's ended? Sir, this while I am beholden to this gentleman, oh. who left his own way to keep me company. And in discourse, I find him much desirous to see your castle. He hath deserved it, sir, if you please to grant it. With all my heart, sir. Yet there's an article between. I must know your country. We use not to give survey of our chief strengths to strangers. Our citadels are placed conspicuous to outward view on prominence tops, but within our secrets. A Valencian, sir. A Valencian? That's native, sir. Of what name, I beseech you? Alcimero, sir. Alcimero? Not the son of John de Alcimero. The same, sir. Oh, sir, I knew your father. We two were an acquaintance long ago before our chins were worth Iulan down, and so continued till the stamp of time had coined us into silver. Well... He's gone. The good soldier went with him. You went together in that, sir? No, by St. Jakes, I came behind him. Yet I have done somewhat, too. An unhappy day swallowed him at last at Gibraltar in fight with those rebellious Hollanders, was it not so? Whose death I had revenged, or followed him in fate, 
but not the late league prevented me. Aye, aye. It was time to breathe. Oh, Joanna, I should have told thee news. I saw Piraquo lately. That's ill news. He's hot preparing for his day of triumph. Thou must be bride within this seven night. I must now part, and never meet again with any joy on earth. Nay, good sir, be not so violent. With speed, I cannot render satisfaction unto the dear companion of my soul, virginity, whom I thus long have lived with, and part with it so rude and suddenly. Can such friends divide, never to meet again, without a solemn farewell? Tush, tush, there's a toy. Sir, your pardon, my affairs call on me. Oh, sir, by no means. Not change so soon, I hope. You must see my castle and her best entertainments ere we part. I shall think myself unkindly used else. Come, come, let's on. I had good hope your stay had been a while with us in Alicante. I might have bid you to my daughter's wedding. He means to feast me and poisons me beforehand. I should be dearly glad to be there, sir, did my occasion suit as I could wish. I shall be sorry if you be not there when it is done, sir, but not so suddenly. I tell you, sir, the gentleman's complete. A courtier and a gallant, enriched with many fair and noble ornaments. I would not change him for a son-in-law for any he in Spain, the proudest he, and we have great ones, that you know. He's much bound to you, sir. But come. By the way, I'll tell you more of him. How shall I dare to venture in his castle when he discharges murderers at the gate? But I must on, for back I cannot go. Look, girl, my gloves fallen. Stay, stay, the floor is help a little. Here, lady. Mischief on your officious forwardness. Who bade you stoop? They touch my hand no more. There, for t'other's sake, I part with this. Take them and draw thine own skin off with them. Here's a favour come with a mischief. Now, I know she had rather wear my pelt tanned in a pair of dancing pumps than I should thrust my fingers into her sockets here. I know she hates me, yet cannot choose but love her. No matter, if but to vex her, I'll haunt her still. Though I get nothing else, I'll have my will. Lolio, I must trust thee with a secret, but thou must keep it. I was ever close to a secret, sir. The diligence that I have found in thee, the care and industry already passed, assures me of thy good continuance. Lolio, I have a wife. Why, sir, tis too late to keep her secret. She's known to be married all the town and country over. Thou goest too fast, my Lolio. That knowledge, I allow, no man can be barred it, but there is a knowledge which is nearer, deeper. And sweeter, Lolio. Well, sir, let us handle that between you and I. Tis that I go about, man. Lolio, my wife is young. So much the worse to be kept secret, sir. Why, now thou meets the substance of the point. I am old, Lolio. No, sir, tis I am old, Lolio. Yet why may not this concord and sympathise? Old trees and young plants often grow together, well enough agreeing. I sir, but the old trees raise themselves higher and broader than the young plants. A shrewd application. There's the fear, man. I would wear my ring on my own finger. You must keep it on still, then. If it but lie by, one or other will be thrusting into it. Thou conceives me, Lolio. Here thy watchful eye must have employment. I cannot always be at home. That is where you cannot. I must look out. I know it. You must look out. Tis every man's case. Here, I do say, must thy employment be to watch her treadings, and in my absence supply my place. I'll do my best, sir. Yet surely I cannot see who you should have cause to be jealous of. Thy reason for that, Lollio, tis a comfortable question. We have but two sorts of people in the house, and both under the whip. That's fools and madmen. The one has not wit enough to be knaves, and the other not knavery enough to be fools. Aye, those are all my patients, Lollio. I do profess the cure of either sort. My trade, my living tis, I thrive by it. But here's the care that mixes with my thrift. The daily visitants that come to see my brain-sick patients, I would not have to see my wife. 
gallants, I do observe, of quick, enticing eyes, rich in habits, of stature and proportion, very comely. These are most shrewd temptations, Lollio. They may be easily answered, sir. If they come to see the fools and madmen, you and I may serve the turn and let my mistress alone. She's of neither sort. Tis a good war. Indeed. Come they to see our madmen or our fools, let them see no more than what they come for. By that consequent, they must not see her. I'm sure she's no fool. Oh, and I'm sure she's no madman. Uh, profoundly, Nolio. <laughs> it will be long ere all thy scholars learn this lesson. And I did look to have a new one oh. entered. <clears throat> Stay, I think my expectation is come home. Right. Save you, sir. My business speaks itself. This sight takes off the labour of my tongue. Aye, aye, sir, tis plain enough. You mean him for my patient. And if your pains prove but commodious, to give but some little strength to his sick and weak part of nature in him, these are but patterns to show you of the whole pieces that will follow to you, beside the charge of diet, washing and other necessaries, fully defrayed. I believe it's, sir, uh, there shall no care be wanting. Hmm. Sir, an officer in this place may deserve something. The trouble will pass through my hands. Tis fit something should come to your hands then, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, sir. Tis I must keep him sweet and read to him. What is his name? His name is Antonio. Oh, yeah. Marry, we use but half to him. Only Tony. Tony. Tony, it is enough and a very good name for a fool. <laughs> what is your name, Tony? <laughs> well, I thank you, cousin. <laughs> good boy. Hold up your head. Uh, <laughs> he can laugh. I perceive by that he is no beast. Well, sir, if you can raise him but to any height... Any degree of wit might he attain, as I might say, to creep, but on all four, towards the chair of wit, or walk on crutches, t'would add an honour to your worthy pains, and a great family might pray for you, mm. to which he should be heir, had he discretion to claim and guide his own. Assure you, sir, he is a gentleman. <coughs> now, there's nobody doubted that. At first sight I knew him for a gentleman. <coughs> he looks no other yet. Let him have good attendance and sweet lodging. As good as my mistress lies in, sir. And as you allow us time and means, we can raise him to the higher degree of discretion. Nay, there shall no cost want, sir. It will hardly be stretched up to the wit of a magnifico. Oh, no, that's not to be expected. Far shorter will be enough. I warrant you I'll make him fit to bear office in five weeks. I'll undertake to wind him up to the wit of constable. If it be lower than that, it might serve turn. Oh, fie. To level him with a head but a beadle or watchman were mm. but little better than he is. Constable, I'll able him. If he do come to be a justice afterwards, let him thank the keeper. <laughs> or I'll go further with you. Say I do bring him up to my own pitch. Say I make him as wise as myself. Why, there I would have it. <laughs> and so I'll leave you. Your best cares, I beseech you. I'll take none with you. Leave them all with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cousin's gone. Cousin. Cousin, oh! Peace, peace, Tony. You must not cry, child. You must be whipped if you do. Your cousin is here still. I am your cousin, Tony. <coughs> then I'll not cry, if thou beest my cousin. <laughs> I will best try his wit a little, that I may know what form to place him in. I do, Lolly, you do. I must ask him easy questions at first. <laughs> Tony, how many true fingers has a tailor on his right hand? As many as on his left, cousin. Good. And how many on both? Two less than a deuce, cousin. Very well answered. <laughs> I come again, Tony. How many knaves make an honest man? I know not that, cousin. No, the question is too hard for you. I'll tell you, cousin. There's three knaves may make an honest man, a sergeant, a jailer, and a beadle. Mm. The sergeant catches him, the jailer holds him, and the beadle lashes him. And if he be not honest then, the hangman must cure him. 
<laughs> That's fine sport, cousin. This was too deep a question for the fool, Lolly. Yeah. <laughs> the head of a pillory, the bread's two letters. Fly, fly, uh, and he catches the swallow. Oh, the devil put a rough about a track. You may hear what time of day it is. The chimes of Bedlam goes east. Peace, or the wire comes. Peace, I say. Their hours come. They must be fed, Lolly. There's no hope of recovery if that Welsh madman was undone by a mouse that spoiled him of parmesan. Lost his wits for it. Go to your charge, Lolly. Out to mine. Go to your madman's ward. Let me alone with your fools. And remember my last charge, Lolly. Of which your patience do you think I am? Come, Tony, you must amongst your schoolfellows now. There's busy scholars amongst them, I can tell you. There's some of them at Stolta, Stolta, Stolta. I would see the madman, cousin, if they would not bite me. No, they shall not bite thee, Tony. They bite when they are at dinner, do they not, cuz? They bite at dinner indeed, Tony. Well, I hope to get credit by thee. <laughs> I like thee the best of all the scholars that ever I brought up, and thou shalt prove a wise man, <laughs> or I'll prove a fool myself. Good Signor Jasperino. Oh, sir, I'm ready now for that first service which makes the name of friend sit glorious on you. Good angels, and this conduct be your guide. Fitness of time and place is here set down. How wise is Alcimero in his friend. It is a sign he makes his choice with judgment. Then I appear in nothing more approved than making choice of him. For tis a principle. He that can choose that bosom well, who of his thoughts partakes, proves most discreet in every choice he makes. Methinks I love now with the eyes of judgment, and see the way to merit, clearly see it. A true deserver, like a diamond sparkles. In darkness you may see him, that's in absence, which is the greatest darkness falls on love. Yet is he best discerned then with intellectual eyesight. Yonder's she. Whatever ails me. Now, a late especially. I can as well be hanged as refrain seeing her. Some twenty times a day. Nay, not so little. Do I force errands, frame ways and excuses to come into her sight, and I have small reason for it, and less encouragement, for she baits me still every time worse than other, does profess herself the cruelest enemy to my face in town, and no hand can abide the sight of me, as if danger or ill luck hung in my looks. I must confess my face is bad enough. But I know far worse has better fortune, and not endured alone, but doted on. And yet such pig-haired faces, chins like witches, here and there five hairs whispering in a corner as if they grew in fear one of another, wrinkles like troughs, where swine deformity swills the tears of perjury that lie there like wash, fallen from the slimy and dishonest eye. Yet such a one plucks sweets without restraint, and has the grace of beauty to his sweet. Though my hard fate has thrust me out to servitude, I tumbled into the world a gentleman. What's Piracqua my father spends his breath for? And his blessing is only mine as I regard his name, else it goes from me and turns head against me, transformed into a curse. Some speedy way must be remembered. He's so forward, too, so urgent that way scarce allows me breath to speak to my new comforts. She turns her blessed eye upon me now, oh. and I'll endure all storms before I part with it. Again? This ominous, ill-faced fellow more disturbs me than all my other passions. Now it begins again. I'll stand this storm of hail, though the stones pelt me. Thy business... What's thy business? Soft and fair, 
I cannot part so soon now. The villain's fixed. Thou standing toad pool. The shower falls amain now. Who sent thee? What's thy errand? Leave my sight. My lord, your father charged me to deliver a message to you. What? Another since? Do it and be hanged, then. Let me be rid of thee. True service merits mercy. What's thy message? Let beauty settle but in patience. You shall hear all. A dallying, trifling torment. Signor Alonso de Piracuo, lady. Soul brother to Tommaso de Piracuo. Slave, when wilt make an end? Too soon I shall. What, all this while of him? The said Alonso, with the foresaid Tommaso... Yet again! ...is new alighted. Vengeance, strike the news! Thou thing most loathed, what cause was there in this to bring thee to my sight? My lord, your father, charged me to seek you out. Is there no other to send his errand by? It seems tis my luck to be the way still. Get thee from me! Why am not I an ass to devise ways thus to be railed at? I must see her still. I shall have a mad qualm within this hour again. I know it. And like a common garden bull, I do but take breath to be lugged again. What this may bode, I know not. Now, I'll despair the less, because there's daily precedence of bad faces, beloved beyond all reason. These foul chops may come into favour one day amongst his fellows. Wrangling has proved the mistress of good pastime. As children cry themselves asleep, I have seen women have chid themselves abed to men. I never see this fellow, but I think of some harm towards me. Dangers in my mind still. I scarce leave trembling of an hour after. The next good mood I find my father in. I'll get him quite discarded. Lost in this small disturbance and forgot affliction's fiercer torrent that now comes to bear down all my comforts. You are both welcome, but an especial one belongs to you, sir, to whose most noble name our love presents the addition of a son, our son Alonso. The treasury of honour cannot bring forth a title I should more rejoice in, sir. You have improved it well. Daughter, prepare. The day will steal upon thee suddenly. One moment, father. Might I speak with you? Oh. Alonso? Brother? In troth, I see small welcome in her eye. Fie, you are too severe a censurer of love in all points. There's no bringing on you. If lovers should mark everything a fault, affection would be like an ill-set book, whose faults might prove as big as half the volume. That's all I do entreat. It is but reasonable. I'll see what my son says to it. Son Alonso! His emotion made but to reprieve a maidenhead three days longer. The request is not far out of reason, for indeed the former time is pinching. Though my joys be set back so much time as I could wish they had been forward, yet since she desires it, the time is set as pleasing as before. I find no gladness wanting. May I ever meet it in that point still? You're nobly welcome, sirs. Come, Joanna. Say farewell. My lord. <laughs> So did you mark the dullness of her parting now? What dullness? Thou art so exceptious still. Why, let it go, then. I am but a fool to mark your harm so heedfully. Where's the oversight? Come, your faith's cousined in her, strongly cousined. Unsettle your affection with all speed. Wisdom can bring it to your pieces, ruined else. Think what a torment is to marry one whose heart is leapt into another's bosom. If ever pleasure she receive from thee, it comes not in thy name, nor of thy gift. She lies but with another in thine arms. He thee half father unto all thy children. In the conception, if he get him not, she helps to get him for him in his passions. And how dangerous and shameful her restraint may go in time to, it is not to be thought on without suffering. You speak as if she loved some other, then. Do you apprehend so slowly? Nay, and that be your fear only, I'm safe enough. Preserve your friendship and your counsel, brother, for times of more distress. I should depart an enemy, a dangerous, deadly one, to any but thyself that should but think she knew the meaning of inconstancy, much less the use and practice. Yet we're friends. 
pray let no more be urged. I can endure much till I meet an injury to her. Then I am not myself. Farewell, sweet brother. How much we're bound to heaven to depart lovingly. Mm. <laughs> the place is my charge. You have kept your hour, and the reward of a just meeting bless you. I hear my lady coming. Complete gentleman. This goes well. These women are the ladies' cabinets. Things of most precious trust are locked into them. I have within mine eye all my desires. Requests that holy prayers are sent heaven for and brings them down to furnish our defects come not more sweet to our necessities than thou unto my wishes. We're so like in our expressions, lady, that unless I borrow the same words, I shall never find their equals. <laughs> How happy were this meeting, this embrace, if it were free from envy. This poor kiss... It has an enemy, a hateful one, that wishes poison to it. How well were I now, if there were none such name known as Paracro, nor no such tie as the command of parents, I should be but too much blessed. One good service would strike off both your fears, and I'll go near it too. Since you are so distressed, remove the cause. The command ceases, so there's two fears blown out with one and the same blast. Pray let me find you, sir. What might that service be so strangely happy? The honourablest peace bout man, valour. I'll send a challenge to Paracro instantly. How? Call you that extinguishing of fear when tis the only way to keep it flaming? Are not you ventured in the action that's all my joys and comforts? Pray no more, sir. Say you prevailed. Your dangers and not mine. Then the law would claim you from me. Or obscurity be made the grave to bury you alive. I'm glad these thoughts come forth. Oh, keep not one of this condition, sir. Here was a course found to bring sorrow on her way to death. The tears would ne'er have dried till dust had choked them. Blood guiltiness becomes a fouler visage. And now I think on one. I was to blame. I had marred so good a market with my scorn. It had been done questionless. The ugliest creature creation framed for some use. Yet to see, I could not mark so much where it should be. Lady. Why, men of art make much of poison. Keep one to expel another. Where was my art? Lady, you hear not me. I do, especially, sir. The present times are not so sure of our side as those hereafter may be. We must use them, then, as thrifty folks their wealth. Sparingly, now, till the time opens. You teach wisdom, lady. Within there, Diophanta. You call, madam. Perfect your service, and conduct this gentleman the private way you brought him. I shall, madam. My love's as firm as love e'er built upon. I have watched this meeting, and do wonder much what shall become of t'other. I'm sure both cannot be served unless she transgress. Happily, then I'll put in for one. For if a woman fly from one point, from him she makes a husband. She spreads and mounts then like arithmetic. One, ten, one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand proves in time subtler to an army royal. Now do I look to be most richly railed at, yet I must see her. Why? Put case I loathed him as much as youth and beauty hates a sepulchre. Must I needs show it? Cannot I keep that secret and serve my turn upon him? See, he's here. De Flores. I shall run mad with joy. She called me fairly by my name, De Flores, and neither rogue nor rascal. What have you done to your face, Elate? You've met with some good physician. 
You've pruned yourself, methinks. You are not wont to look so amorously. Not I. It is the same physnomy to a hair and pimple which she called scurvy scarce an hour ago. How is this? Come hither. Nearer, man. I'm up to the chin in heaven. Turn. Let me see. For tis but the heat of the liver I perceived. I thought it had been worse. Her fingers touched me. She smells all amber. I'll make a water, for you shall cleanse this within a fortnight. With your own hands, lady? Yes, mine own, sir. In a work of cure, I'll trust no other. Tis half an act of pleasure to hear her talk thus to me. When we're used to a hard face, tis not so unpleasing. It mends still in opinion. Hourly mends. I see it by experience. I was blessed to light upon this minute. I'll make you some. Hardness becomes the visage of a man well. It argues service, resolution, manhood, if cause were of employment. T'would be soon seen. If e'er your ladyship had cause to use it, I would but wish the honour of a service so happy as that mounts to. We shall try you. Oh, my de Flores. How's that? She calls me hers already, my de Flores. You were about to sigh out somewhat, madam. No. Was I? I forgot. Oh. There it is again. The very fellow ought. You are too quick, sir. There's no excuse for it now I heard it twice, madam. That sigh would fain have utterance. Take pity on't and lend it a free word. Last how it labours for liberty. I hear the murmur yet. Beat at your bosom. Would creation... Aye, well said, that's it. ...had formed me man. Nay, that's not it. Oh, tis the soul of freedom. I should not then be forced to marry one I hate beyond all depths. I should have power then to oppose my loathings. Nay, remove them. Forever from my sight. Oh, blessed occasion. Without change to your sex, you have your wishes. Claim so much man in me. In thee, de Flores? There's small cause for that. Put it not from me. It's a service that I kneel for to you. You are too violent to mean faithfully. There's horror in my service. Blood and danger. Can those be things to sue for? If you knew. How sweet it were to me to be employed in any act of yours. You would say then, I failed and used not reverence enough when I received the charge on't. This is much, methinks. Belike his wants are greedy, and to such gold tastes like angel's food. Rise. I'll have the work first. Possible his need is strong upon him. There's to encourage thee. As thou art forward and thy service dangerous... Thy reward shall be precious. That I have thought on. I have assured myself of that beforehand, and know it will be precious. The thought ravishes. Then take him to thy fury. I thirst for him. Alonso de Baracco. His end's upon him. He shall be seen no more. How lovely now dost thou appear to me. Never was man... Dearly are rewarded. I do think of that. Be wondrous careful in the execution. Why are not both our lives upon the cast? Then I throw all my fears upon thy service. They ne'er shall rise to hurt you. When the deed's done, I'll furnish thee with all things for thy flight. Thou mayst live bravely in another country. I, I will talk of that hereafter. Oh, my blood. Methinks I feel her in mine arms already. Her wanton fingers combing out this beard and being pleased, praising this bad face. Hunger and pleasure. They'll commend sometimes slovenly dishes and feed heartily on them. Nay, which is stranger, refuse daintier for them. Some women are odd feeders. I'm too loud. Here comes the man goes supperless to bed. Yet shall not rise tomorrow to his dinner. The Flores. My kind, honourable lord. I'm glad I am met with thee. Sir. Thou canst show me the full strength of the castle. That I can, sir. I much desire it. And if the ways and straits of some of the passages be not too tedious for you, I will assure you worth your time and sight, my lord. Oh, that shall be no hindrance. 
I'm your servant, then. Tis now near dinner time. Against your lordship's rising, I'll have the keys about me. Thanks. Kind to Florence. He's safely thrust upon me beyond hopes. Yes, here are all the keys. I was afraid, my lord, I'd wanted for the postern. This is it. I've all, I've all, my lord. This for the sconce. Tis a most spacious and impregnable fort. You'll tell me more, my lord. This descent is somewhat narrow. We shall never pass well with our weapons. They'll but trouble us. Thou sayest true. Pray, let me help your lordship. Tis done. Thanks, kind to Flores. Here are hooks, my lord, to hang such things on purpose. Lead. I'll follow thee. All this is nothing. You shall see anon a place you little dream of. I am glad I have this leisure. All your master's house, imagine I had taken a gondola. <laughs> All but myself, sir. My lord, I'll place you at a casement here. We'll show you the full strength of all the castle. Look, spend your eye a while upon that object. Here's rich variety, De Flores. Yes, sir. Goodly munition. Aye, there's ordnance, sir. No bastard metal. We'll ring you a peal like bells at great men's funerals. <laughs> Keep your eye straight, my lord. Take special notice of that sconce before you. There you may dwell a while. I am a child. So am I. Oh! Oh! The flowers. Oh, the flowers. Whose malice hast thou put on? Do you question a work of secrecy? Uh, I must silence you. Oh! I must silence you. So, here's an undertaking well accomplished. This vault serves to good use now. Watch that through sparkles in my eye. Oh, tis a diamond he wears upon his finger. It was well found. This will approve the work. Oh, what so fast on, not part in death. I'll take a speedy course, then finger and all shall off. Ah. So now I'll clear the passages from all suspect or fear. to fetter the doors against me. If you keep me in a cage, pray whistle to me. Let me be doing something. You shall be doing, if it please you. I'll whistle to you if you'll pipe after. Is it your master's pleasure or your own to keep me in this pinfold? It is for my master's pleasure. Lest being taken in another man's corn, you might be pounded in another place. Tis very well, and he'll prove very wise. He says you have company enough in the house. If you please to be sociable, of all sorts of people. Of all sorts? Why, he is none but fools and madmen. Very well. And where will you find any other if you should go abroad? There's my master, and I to boot too. Of either sort, one. A madman and a fool. Well, I would e'en participate in both, then, if I were as you. I know you're half mad already. Be half foolish, too. <laughs> You're a brave, saucy rascal. <laughs> Come on, sir. Afford me then the pleasure of your bedlam. You were commending once today to me, your last come lunatic. What a proper body there was without brains to guide it. And what a pitiful delight appeared in that defect, as if your wisdom had found a mirth in madness. <laughs> Pray, sir, let me partake, if there be such a pleasure. If I do not show you the handsomest, discreetest madman, one that I may call the understanding madman, then say I am a fool. Well, a match. 
I will say so. Well, when you have a taste of the madman, you shall, if you please, see Fool's College of the Side. A seldom lot there. Tis but shooting a bolt or two when you're amongst them. Come on, sir. Let me see how handsomely you'll behave yourself now. How <coughs> oh, sweetly she looks. Oh, but there's a wrinkle in her brow as deep as philosophy. <coughs> Anacreon, drink to my mistress' health. I'll pledge it. Stay, stay, stay. There's a spider in the cup. No, <laughs> it is but a grape stone. <laughs> Swallow it. Fear nothing, poet. So, so, look higher. <laughs> Alack. Alack, tis too full of pity to be laughed at. How fell he mad? Canst thou tell? For love, mistress. He was a pretty poet, too. And that set him forwards first. The muses then forsook him. He ran mad for a chambermaid. Yet she was but a dwarf, neither. Hail, bright Titania. Why stands thou idle on these flowery banks? Oberon is dancing with his dryads. I'll gather daisies, a primrose violets, and bind them in a verse of posy. Not too near, <laughs> you see your danger. Oh, hold thy hand, great Diomed. Thou feedst thy horses well, they shall obey thee. Get up, Bucephalus kneels. <laughs> you see how I awe my flock. A shepherd has not his dog at more obedience. His conscience is unquiet. Sure, that was the cause of this. A proper gentleman. Uh, didst thou never hear of one Tiresias, a famous poet? Yes, that kept tame wild geese. That's he. <laughs> I am the man. No. Yes, but make no words on. <laughs> I was a man seven years ago. A stripling, I think you might say. Now I'm a woman. All feminine. I would, I might see that. Juno struck me blind. <laughs> I'll ne'er believe that, for a woman, they say, has an eye more than a man. I say she struck me blind. <laughs> and Luna made you mad. You have two trades to beg with. Luna is now big-bellied, and there's room for both of us to ride with Hecate. I'll drag thee up into her silver sphere, and there we'll kick the dog and beat the bush that barks against the witches of the night. The swift lycanthropy, the walks the round. We'll tear their wolves skins and see the sheep. Does it come to this? Nay, then my poison comes forth again. Mad slave indeed, abuse your keeper. I prithee, hence with him. Now he grows dangerous. Sweet love, pity me. Give me leave to lie with me. No, I'll see you wiser first to your kettle. No noise, she sleeps. Draw all the curtains round. Let no soft sound molest the pretty soul. But love and love creeps in at your mouse hole. I would you would get in your hole. Now, mistress, I will bring you another sort. You shall be fooled another while. Tony! Come hither, Tony! Look who's yonder, Tony. <laughs> Cousin, is it not my aunt? Yes, tis one of them, Tony. <laughs> How do you, uncle? <laughs> Fear him not, mistress. Tis a gentle midget. You may play with him. As safely with him as with his bauble. How long hast thou been a fool? Ever since I came hither, cousin. <laughs> cousin? I'm none of thy cousins, fool. Oh, mistress, fools have always so much wit as to claim their kindred. Oh. Hark you, your scholars in the upper room are out of order. Must I come amongst you? Keep you the fool, mistress. I'll go up and play left-handed Orlando amongst the madmen. <laughs> well, sir. Tis opportune for now, sweet lady. Nay, cast no amazing eye upon this change. <gasps> this shape of folly shrouds your dearest love, the truest servant to your powerful beauties, whose magic had this force thus to transform me. You are a fool indeed. Oh, tis not strange. Love has an intellect that runs through all the scrutinous sciences and, like a cunning poet, catches a quantity of every knowledge, yet brings all home into one mystery, into one secret that he proceeds in. You're a parlous fool. No danger in me. I bring naught but love 
and his soft, wounding shafts to strike you with. Try but one arrow. If it hurt you, I'll stand you twenty back in recompense. Mm. Oh. Ah. A forward fool, too. This was love's teaching. A thousand ways he fashioned out my way, and this I found the safest and nearest to tread the galaxia to my star. Profound withal. Certain you dreamed of this. Love never taught it waking. Take no acquaintance of these outward follies. There is within a gentleman that loves you. When I see him, I'll speak with him. So in the meantime, keep your habit. It becomes you well enough. As you are a gentleman, I'll not discover you. That's all the favour that you must expect. When you are weary, you may leave the school. For all this while, you have but played the fool. <laughs> Oh, and must again. <laughs> hey, thank you, cousin. I'll be your valentine tomorrow morning. <laughs> How do you like the fool, mistress? A passing well, sir. Is he not witty pretty well for a fool? If he hold on as he begins, he is like to come to something. Aye, thank a good tutor. You may put him to it. He begins to answer pretty hard questions. Tony, how many is five times six? Five times six is six times five. What arithmetician could have answered better? How many is 107? 107 is 701, cousin. Oh, <sighs> this is no wit to speak on. Will you be rid of the fool now? By no means. Let him stay a little. <sighs> Again! Must I come amongst you? Would my master will come home? I am not able to govern both these wards together. Why should a minute of love's hour be lost? Out again? I'd rather you kept your other posture. You become not your tongue when you speak from your clothes. How can he freeze? Lives near so sweet a warmth. Shall I alone walk through the orchard of Hesperides and cowardly not dare to pull an apple? <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Take heed, there's giants keep them. Oh no, fool, are you good at that? Oh, you red Lipsius. He's past ours, Amandi. I believe I must put harder questions to him. I perceive that. You are bold, without fear, too. Oh, what should I fear? Having all joys about me, do you but smile? And love shall play the wanton on your lip, meet and retire, retire and meet again. Look you but cheerfully, and in your eyes I shall behold mine own deformity and dress myself up fairer. I know this shape becomes me not, but in those bright mirrors I shall array me handsomely. Mm. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> what are these? Of fear enough to part us. Yet are they but our schools of lunatics that act their fantasies in any shapes, suiting their present thoughts. If sad, they cry. If mirth be their conceit, they laugh again. Sometimes they imitate the beasts and birds, singing or howling, braying, barking, all as their wild fancies prompt them. These are no fears. But here's a large one, my man. <laughs> That's fine sport indeed, cousin. Uh, <laughs> I would my master were come home. Tis too much for one shepherd to govern two of these flocks. Mm. Come, Tony. Uh, prithee, cousin, let me stay here still. Oh, you must to your book now. You have played sufficiently. Your fool has grown wondrous witty. Well, I'll say nothing. But I do not think but he will put you down one of these days. Oh, I ah, that tiny now settle down. Here the restrained current might make rich, spite of the watchful bankers. Would a woman stray? She need not gad abroad to seek her sin. It would be brought home one ways or other. <laughs> How dost thou, sweet rogue? How now? Come, there are degrees. One fool may be better than another. What's the matter? Nay, if thou givest thy mind... To fool's flesh. Have it thee! Oh, oh you bold slave, you! I could follow now as the other fool did. 
what should I fear, having all joys about me? Do you but smile, and love shall play the wanton on your lip. Oh. Meet and retire, retire and meet again, and so it follows. But is not this the more foolish way? Hmm? Come, sweet rogue, kiss me, my little Lacedaemonian. Hmm? Let me feel how thy pulses beat. Thou hast a thing about thee would do a man pleasure. I lay my hand on us. Sirrah, oh. no more. I see you have discovered this love's knight errant, who hath made adventure for purchase of my love. Be silent. Mute. Mute as a statue. Or his injunction for me enjoying shall be to cut thy throat. I'll do it, though for no other purpose, and be sure he'll not refuse it. My dear, that's all. I'll have my fool's part with you. No more. Your master. How does thou? Your bounden servant, sir. Fie, fie, sweetheart, no more of that. You were best lock me up. In my arms and bosom, my sweet Isabella, I lock thee up thus nearly. <laughs> Lolio, we have employment. We have task in hand. At noble Vermandero's, our castle captain, there is a nuptial to be solemnized. Beatrice Joanna, his fair daughter, bride, for which the gentleman hath bespoke our pains. A mixture of our madmen and our fools to finish, as it were, and make the fag of all the revels the third night from the first. Only an unexpected passage over to make a frightful pleasure, that is all. But not the all I aim at. Could we so act it... To teach it in a wild, distracted measure. Mm -hmm. Though out of form and figure breaking time's head, it were no matter, twould be healed again in one age or another, if not in this. Mm -hmm. Tis this, Lollio. <laughs> There's good reward begun, and will beget a bounty, be it known. Well, this is easy, I warrant you. You have about you fools and madmen that can dance very well. And tis no wonder your best dancers are not the wisest men. The reason is, with often jumping, they jolt their brains down into their feet. That their wits lie more about their heels than in their heads. Honest lollio, thou gives me good reason mm. and a comfort in it. <laughs> You've a fine trade on. Mm. Madmen and fools are a staple commodity. Yes, oh, wife, we must eat. Wear clothes right. and live. <laughs> Just at the lawyer's haven we arrive. By madmen and by fools we both do thrive. <laughs> Valencia speaks so nobly of you, so I wish I had a daughter now for you. The fellow of this creature were a partner for a king's love. I had her fellow once, sir. But heaven has married her to joys eternal, to a sin to wish her in this vale again. Come, sir. Your friend and you shall see the pleasures which my health chiefly joys in. I hear the beauty of this seat largely. It falls much short of that. So here's one step into my father's favour. Time will fix him. I have got him now the liberty of the house, so wisdom by degrees works out her freedom. And if that eye be darkened that offends me, I wait but that eclipse. This gentleman shall soon shine glorious in my father's liking through the refulgent virtue of my love. My thoughts are at a banquet for the deed, for the sweet recompense that I set down for it. De Flores. Lady. Thy looks promise cheerfully. All things are answerable. Time, circumstance, your wishes and my service. Is it done then? Piraquo is no more. Oh, my joys start at mine eyes. Our sweetest delights are ever more born weeping. I have a token for you. For me? But it was sent somewhat unwillingly. <gasps> I could not get the ring without the finger. Oh. Bless me. What hast thou done? Why, is that more than killing the whole man? I cut his heartstrings. A greedy yeah. hand thrust in a dish at court, and a mistake have had as much as this. It is the first token my father made me send him. And I made him send it back again for his last token. I was loath to leave it, and I'm sure dead men have no use of jewels. He was as loath to part with it, for it stuck, <laughs> as if the flesh and it were both one substance. At the stag's fall, the keeper has his fees. Tis soon applied. All dead men's fees are yours, sir. I pray bury the finger. 
but the stone you may make use on shortly. The true value, take of my truth, is near three hundred ducats. It will hardly buy a cap case for one's conscience, though, to keep it from the worm, as fine as tis. Well, being my fees, I'll take it. Great men have taught me that, or else my merit would scorn the way on't. It might justly, sir. Where thou mistakes, De Flores, tis not given in state of recompense. No, I hope so, lady. You should soon witness my contempt to it, then. Prithee, thou look'st as if thou wert offended. That was strange, lady. Tis not possible my service should draw such a cause from you. Offended? Could you think so? That were much for one of my performance, and so warm yet in my service. It were misery in me to give you cause, sir. I know so much. It were so. Misery in her most sharp condition. Tis resolved, then. Look you, sir. Here's three thousand golden florins. I have not meanly thought upon thy merit. What? Salary? Now you move me. How, De Flores? Do you place me in the rank of verminous fellows to destroy things for wages? Offer gold? The life blood of man? Is anything valued too precious for my recompense? I understand thee not. I could have hired a journeyman in murder at this rate, and mine own conscience might have lain at ease and have had the work brought home. I'm in a labyrinth. What will contend him? I would fain be rid of him. I'll double the sum, sir. You take a course to double my vexation. That's the good you do. Bless me. I am now in worse plight than I was. I know not what will please him. For my fear's sake, I prithee, make away with all speed possible. And if thou beest so modest not to name the sum that will content thee, paper blushes not, send thy demand in writing, it shall follow thee. But prithee, take thy flight. You must fly too, then. I. I'll not stir a foot else. What's your meaning? I, I'm not you as guilty, in, I'm sure, as deep as I, and we should stick together. Come, your fears counsel you but ill. My absence would draw suspect upon you instantly. There were no rescue for you. He speaks home. Nor is it fit we two engaged so jointly should part and live asunder. Oh. How now, sir? This shows not well. What makes your lips so strange? This must not be betwixt us. The man talks wildly. Come, kiss me with a zeal now. Heaven, I doubt him. I will not stand so long to beg him shortly. Take heed, De Flores, of forgetfulness. Twill soon betray us. Take you heed first. He's well grown much forgetful. You're to blame it. He's bold, and I am blamed for it. I have eased you of your trouble. Think of it. I'm in pain and must be eased of you. No. It's a charity. Justice invites your blood to understand me. I dare not. Quickly. Oh, I never shall. Speak it yet further off that I may lose what has been spoken and no sound remain on't. I would not hear so much offence again for such another deed. Soft, lady, soft. The last is not yet paid for. Oh, this act has put me into spirit. I was as greedy on as the parched earth of moisture when the clouds weep. Did you not mark? I wrought myself into it. Nay, sued and kneeled for it. Why was all that pains took? You see, I have thrown contempt upon your gold. Not that I want it not, for I do, piteously, but was not held so precious to begin with, for I place wealth after the heels of pleasure, and were I not resolved in my belief that thy virginity were perfect uh, in thee, I should but take my recompense with grudging, as if I had but half my hopes I agreed for. Why, it is impossible thou canst be so wicked, or shelter such a cunning cruelty to make his death the murderer of my honour. Thy language is so bold and vicious, I cannot see which way I can forgive it with any modesty. Don't you forget yourself. A woman dipped in blood and talk of modesty. Oh, misery of sin! Would I had been bound perpetually unto my living hate in that piraquo than to hear these words. Think but upon the distance that creation set twixt thy blood and mine, and keep thee there! Look but into your conscience. Read me there. Tis a true book. You'll find me there, your equal push. Fly not to your birth, but settle you in what the act has made you. You're no more now. You must forget your parentage to me. You're the deeds creature. By that name you lost your first condition, and I challenge you, as peace and innocency has turned you out and made you one with me. 
With thee, foul villain. Yes, my fair murderess. Do you urge me? Though thou writest maid, thou whore in thy affection, t'was changed from thy first love, and that's a kind of whoredom in thy heart. And he's changed now to bring thy second on, thy Alcimero, whom thy all sweets that ever darkness tasted. If I enjoy thee not, thou ne'er enjoyest. I'll blast the hopes and joys of marriage. I'll confess all my life I rate at nothing. De Flores! I shall rest from all lovers' plagues then. I live in pain now. That shooting I will burn my heart to cinders. Sir, hear me. She that in life and love refuses me, in death and shame, my partner she shall Stay, be. Stay, hear me once for all. I make thee master of all the wealth I have in gold and jewels. Let me go pour unto my bed with honour, and I am rich in all things. Let this silence thee. <laughs> The wealth of all Valencia shall not buy my pleasure from me. Can you weep fate from its determined purpose? So soon may you weep me. Vengeance begins. Murder, I see, is followed by more sins. Was my creation in the womb so cursed it must engender with a viper first? Come, rise and shroud your blushes in my bosom. <laughs> Silence is one of pleasure's best receipts. My peace is wrought forever in this yield. Alas, how the title pants. How loving on what thou so fierce and faints to venture on. The American merchant, who was to be married to Doña Beatrice Joanna de Vermandero this week, has left Alicante and to settle his appearance of her fiancé. We now understand that Doña Beatrice Joanna will be getting married tomorrow at the cathedral. She is to marry Juan de Alcimero of Valencia. Do you, Juan Miguel de Alcimero, take this woman, Beatrice Joanna de Vermandero, as your lawful wedded wife? I do. As your lawful wedded I do. To have and to hold till death do you behold. The forest. Oh, the forest. Oh, whose malice hast thou put on? Do you question a work of secrecy? Oh. I must silence you. I must silence you. I could not get the ring without the finger. Bless me. What hast thou done? Why, is that more than killing the whole man? What hast thou done? I cut his heart strings. What hast thou done? This fellow has undone me endlessly. Never was bride so fearfully distressed. The more I think upon the ensuing night, and whom I am to cope with in embraces, one who's ennobled both in blood and mind, so clear in understanding, that's my plague now, before whose judgment will my fault appear like malefactors' crimes before tribunals. There's no hiding on't. The more I dive into my own distress, how a wise man stands for a great calamity. There's no venturing into his bed. What course so e'er I light upon without my shame, which may grow up to danger. He cannot but in justice strangle me as I lie by him, as a cheater use me. It is a precious craft to play with a false die before a cunning gamester. Here's his closet. The key left in, and he abroad in the park. Sure t'was forgot. I'll be so bold as looking. Bless me, a right physician's closet is set round with files, every one her mark too. Sure he does practice physic for his own use, which may be safely called your great man's wisdom. What manuscript lies here? The book of experiment, called Secrets in Nature. 
So it is. It is so. How to know whether a woman be with child or no? I hope I am not yet. If he should try, though... Oh, let me see. Folio 45. Here it is. The leaf tucked down the point. The place suspicious. If you would know whether a woman be with child or not, give her two spoonfuls of the white water in glass C. Oh, where's that glass C? Oh, yonder, I see it now. And if she be with child, she sleeps full twelve hours after. If not, not. None of that water comes into my belly. Ha! Ah, that which is next is ten times worse. How to know whether a woman be a maid or not? If that should be applied, what would become of me? Oh, belike he has a strong faith of my purity that never yet made proof. But this he calls a merry, slight, but true experiment. The author, Antonius Mizaldus, give the party you suspect the quantity of a spoonful of the water in glass M, which upon her that is a maid makes three several effects. It will make her incontinently gape, then fall into a sudden sneezing, last into a violent laughing, else dull, heavy, and lumpish. <laughs> Where had I been? I fear it, yet tis seven hours to bedtime. <gasps> Good madam, are you here? Seeing that wench now, a trick comes in my mind. Tis a nice piece gold cannot purchase. I come hither, wench, to look my lord. Why, he's in the park, madam. There let him be. Ay, madam, let him compass. Whole parks and forests as great rangers do. At roosting time, a little lodge can hold him. Earth conquering Alexander that thought the world too narrow for him in the end had but his pit hole. I fear thou art not modest, Diophanta. Your thoughts are so unwilling to be known, madam. "'Tis ever the bride's fashion towards bedtime "'to set light by her joys as if she owed them not. "'Her joys? Her fears, thou would say. "'Fear of what? "'Art thou a maid, and talk so to a maid? "'You leave a blushing business behind. "'Beshrew your heart for it. "'Do you mean good sooth, madam?' "'Well, if I'd thought upon the fear at first, "'man should have been unknown. "'Is it possible?' I will give a thousand ducats to that woman would try what my fear were and tell me true tomorrow when she gets from it. As she likes, I might perhaps be drawn to it. Are you in earnest? Do you get the woman? Then challenge me and see if I'll fly from it. But I must tell you this, by the way, she must be a true maid, else there's no trial. My fears are not hers else. Nay, she that I would put into your hands, madam, shall be a maid. You know I should be shamed else, because she lies for me. It is a strange humour. But are you serious still? Would you resign your first night's pleasure and give money too? As willingly as live. Madam, what say you to me and stray no further? I've a good mind in trough to earn your money. You're too quick, I fear, to be a maid. How? Not a maid? Nay, then you urge me, madam. Your honourable self is not a truer with all your fears upon you than I, with all my lights and joys about me. I'm glad to hear it, then. You dare put your honesty upon an easy trial. Easy? Anything. I'll come to you straight. She will not search me, will she? Like the forewoman of a female jury. Glass M, I, this is it. Look, Diaphanta, you take no worse than I do. And in so doing, I will not question what tis, but take it. Now if the experiment be true, it will praise itself and give me noble ease. Oh. Begins already. There's the first <laughs> symptom. And what haste it makes to fall into the second there by this time. Most admirable secret. <laughs> On the contrary, it stirs not me a whit, which <laughs> most concerns it. Just in all things and in order, as if it were circumscribed, one accident gives way unto another. <laughs> How now, wench? <laughs> I am so, so light.
to that. <laughs> so pleasurable. Oh, but one swig more, sweet madam. I, tomorrow, we shall have time to sit by it. Oh, now I'm sad again. It lays itself so gently, too. Come, wench. Most honest diaphanta, I dare call thee now. Pray tell me, madam, what trick call you this? I'll tell thee all hereafter. We must study the carriage of this business. I shall carry it well, because I love the burden. About midnight. You must not fail to steal forth gently, that I may use the place. Oh, fear not, madam. I shall be cool by that time. The bride's place, and with a thousand ducats. <laughs> I'm for a justice now. I bring a portion with me. I scorn small fools. My lord? I tell thee, knave, mine honour is in question. A thing till now free from suspicion, nor ever was their cause. Who of my gentlemen are absent? Tell me, and truly, how many and who? Antonio, sir, and Francisco. When did they leave the castle? Some ten days since, sir. The one intending for Briamata, the other for Valencia. The time accuses them. A charge of murder is brought within my castle gate. Paracuo's murder. I dare not answer faithfully their absence. A strict command of apprehension shall pursue him suddenly and either wipe the stain off clear or openly discover it. Provide me winged warrants for the purpose. Sir. I claim a brother of you. You're too hot. Seek him not here. Yes, amongst your dearest bloods, if my peace find no fairer satisfaction. This is the place must yield account for him, for here I left him and the hasty tie of this snatched marriage gives strong testimony of his most certain ruin. Certain falsehood. This is the place indeed. His breach of faith has too much marred both my abused love, the honourable love I reserved for him, and mocked my daughter's joy. The prepared morning blushed at his infidelity. He left contempt and scorn to throw upon those friends whose belief hurt him. Oh, t'was most ignoble to take his fight so unexpectedly and throw such public wrongs on those that loved him. And this is all your answer? Tis too fair for one of his alliance, and I warn you that this place no more see you. The best is... There is more grounds to meet a man's revenge on. Honest before us. That's my name indeed. Saw you the bride, good sweet sir, which we took she. I have blessed mine eyes from seeing such a false one. Fain, get off, this man's not for my company. I smell his brother's blood when I come near him. Come hither, kind and true one. I remember my brother loved thee well. Oh, purely, dear sir. Thinks I am now again a killing on him. He brings it so fresh to me. Thou canst guess, sirrah, at some foul, guilty person? Lass, sir, I am so charitable, I think none worse than myself. You did not see the bride, then? I prithee name her not. Is she not wicked? No, no, a pretty easy, round-packed sinner, as your most ladies are. Else you might think I flattered her. But, sir... At no hand wicked, till they're so old, their chins and noses meet, and they salute witches. I am called, I think, sir. That the florist has a wondrous, honest heart. He'll bring it out in time, I am assured on. Good day, Senor Alcimer. Good day. Oh, here's the glorious master of the day's joy. T'will not be long till he and I do reckon. Sir. You are most welcome. You may call that word back. I do not think I am, nor wish to be. Tis strange you found the way to this house, then. Would I ne'er known the cause? I am none of those, sir, that come to give you joy and swill your wine. Tis a more precious liquor that must lay the fiery thirst I bring. Your words and you appear to me great strangers. Time and our swords must make us more acquainted. This the business. I should have a brother in your place. How treachery and malice have disposed of him. I am bound to inquire of him which holds his right, which never could come fairly. You must look to answer for that word, sir. Fear you not. I'll have it ready drawn at our next meeting. Keep your day solemn. Farewell, I disturb it not. I'll bear the smart with patience for a time. Tis somewhat ominous this, a quarrel entered upon this day. My innocence relieves me. I should be wondrous sad else. Jasperino, I have news to tell thee, strange news. I have some too, I think as strange as yours. Would I might keep mine, so my faith and friendship might be kept in. Faith, sir, dispense a little with my zeal and let it cool in this. This puts me on and blames thee for thy slowness. All may prove nothing, only a friendly fear that leapt from me, sir. No question may prove nothing. Let's partake it, though. T'was Diophantus' chance... 
for to that wench I pretend honest love and she deserves it, to leave me in a back part of the house, a place we chose for private conference. She was no sooner gone, but instantly I heard your bride's voice in the next room to me and, lending more attention, found De Flores louder than she. De Flores, thou art out now. You'll tell me more anon. Still, I'll prevent thee. The very sight of him is poison to her. That made me stagger too, but Diophanta at her return confirmed it. Diophanta? Then fell we both to listen, and words passed like those that challenge interest in a woman. Peace, quench thy zeal, tis dangerous to thy bosom. Then truth is full of peril. Such truths are. Oh, were she the sole glory of the earth, had eyes that could shoot fire in two kings' breasts, and touched she sleeps not here, yet I have time, though night be near, to be resolved hereof, and prithee do not weigh me by my passions. I never weighed, friend, so. Done charitably. That key will lead thee to a pretty secret by a Chaldean taught me, and I've spent my study upon some. Bring from my closet a glass inscribed there with the letter M, and question not my purpose. It shall be done, sir. How can this hang together? Not an hour since, a woman came pleading her lady's fears, delivered her for the most timorous virgin that ever shrunk at man's name, and so modest. She charged her weep out her request to me, that she might come obscurely to my bosom. All things go well. My woman's preparing yonder for her sweet voyage, which grieves me to lose. Necessity compels it. I lose all else. Sir, I was bold to weep a message to you. Pardon my modest fears. The dove's not meeker. She's abused, questionless. Ah, Jasperino, you are ready? The glass upon my life. I see the letter. Sir, this is M. It is it. I am suspected. How fitly our bride comes to partake with us. What is it, my lord? No hurt. Sir, pardon me. I seldom taste of any composition. But this, upon my warrant, you shall venture on. I fear it will make me ill. Heaven forbid that. I'm put now to my cunning. The effects I know. If I can now but feign him handsomely. It has that secret virtue it ne'er missed, sir, upon a virgin. <laughs> By all that's virtuous, it takes there proceeds. This is the strangest trick to know a maid by. <laughs> you have given me joy of heart to drink, my lord. No, thou hast given me such joy of heart that never can be blasted. What's the matter, sir? See, now it is settled in a melancholy keeps both the time and method. My Joanna, chaste as the breath of heaven or morning's womb that brings the day forth. <sighs> Thus my love encloses thee. waning moon? Does love turn fool, run mad, and all at once? Sirrah, here's a madman akin to the fool, too. A lunatic lover. No, no, not he I brought the letter from. Compare his inside with his out, and tell me. To the bright Andromeda, chief chambermaid to the night of the sun, at the sign of Scorpio in the middle region, sent by the bellows mender of Elis. Pay the post. This is stark madness. Now, mark the inside. <clears throat> Sweet lady, having now cast off this counterfeit cover of a madman, I appear to your best judgment a true and faithful lover of your beauty. Oh, his majesty. I come in winter to you, dismantled of my proper ornaments. By the sweet splendour of your cheerful smiles, I spring and live a lover. Mad rascal still. Tread him not underfoot that shall appear an honour to your bounties. I remain mad till I speak with you, from whom I expect my cure, yours all, or one beside himself, Franciscus. Oh, you like to have a fine time, aunt. My master and I may give over our professions. I do not think but you can cure fools and madmen faster than we, with little pains, too. Very likely. 
And one thing I must tell you, mistress, you perceive that I am privy to your skill. If I find you minster once and set up the trail, I put in for my thirds. I shall be mad or fool else. But thy counsel now. How shall I deal with them? Huh, why? Do you mean to deal with them? Huh? Nay, the fair understanding. How to use them? Abuse them. That's the way to mad the fool and make a fool of the madman. And then you use them kindly. Tis easy. I'll practice. Do thou observe it. The key of thy wardrobe. <clears throat> there. Fit yourself for them, and I'll fit them both for you. Take thou no further notice than the outside. <laughs> Not an inch. I'll put you to the inside. Well, you know, I'm <clears throat> there. <clears throat> Will all be perfect, thinks thou? Tomorrow night, as if to close up the solemnity of Ermandero expects us. <laughs> I mistrust the madman most. Huh? The fools will do well enough. I've taken pains with them. Tash, they cannot miss. The more absurdity, the more commends it. Oh, so, no, rough behaviours affright the ladies. They are nice things, thou knowest. No, you need not fear, son. As long as we are there with our commanding pizzles, they'll be as tame as the ladies themselves. <laughs> I will see them once more rehearsed before they go. I was about it, sir. Look you to the madman's Morris and let me alone with the other. There's one or two that I mistrust their fooling. I'll instruct them and then they shall rehearse the whole measure. Do, do. I I'll see the music prepared. Oh, but Lollio, by the way, how does my wife brook her restraint? Does she not grudge at it? So-so. Mm, she takes some pleasure in the house, or she would abroad else. You must allow her a little more length. She's kept too short. She shall along to Vermandero's with us. That will serve her for a month's liberty. Uh, uh, what's that on your face, sir? What? Oh, yeah. What? I, I can see nothing. Why, you mercy, sir, tis your nose. It's sort like the trunk of a young elephant. Away, <laughs> rascal. I'll prepare the music. Lollio! Do so, and I'll dance the whilst. Tony, where art thou, Tony? Here, cousin! <laughs> where art thou? Come, <laughs> Tony, the footmanship I taught you. I'd rather ride, cousin. <laughs> Aye, I whip take you, but I'll keep you out. <clears throat> Vault in! Look you, Tony! <clears throat> La 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 la. On. <clears throat> fa la 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 la. There, there, there. An honour. Is this an honour, Kaz? Yes, and please your worship. Does honour bend in the hands, Kaz? Marry, does it? <laughs> as low as worship, squireship, nay, yeomanry itself sometimes from whence it first stiffened. <clears throat> <clears throat> there. Raise a caper. <laughs> A oh, caper after an honour, cuz. Very proper, for honour is but a caper. Rises as fast and high, has a knee or two, and falls to the ground again. <clears throat> oh, you can remember your <laughs> figure, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cousin, when I see thy figure, I can remember mine. Hey, how she treads the air. <clears throat> shoo, shoo, t'other way. He burns his wings else. Here's wax enough uh, below, Icarus more than will be comfort these eighteen moons. He is down, he is down. What a terrible fall he had. Stand up, thou son of great and Daedalus. Let us tread the lower labyrinth. I'll bring thee to the clue. Pretty cuz, let me alone. <gasps> Art thou not drowned? Oh, let me suck out those billows oh. in thy belly. <clears throat> Hark how they roar and rumble in distress. Bless thee from the pirates. You pox upon you. Let me alone. Oh, stay in the moon with me, Endymion, and we will rule these wild, rebellious waves that would have drowned my life. I'll kick thee if again thou touch me, thou wild, unshapen antic. I am no fool, you bedlam. Oh, but you are as sure as I am. Mad. Have I put on this habit of a frantic, with love as full of fury to beguile the nimble eye of watchful jealousy, and am I thus rewarded? Oh, dearest beauty! No, 
I have no beauty now, nor never had, but what was in my garments. You, a quick-sighted lover, <laughs> come not near me. <clears throat> Keep your caparisons, your aptly clad. I came a feigner to return stark mad. Stay, or, or I shall change condition and become as you are. My Tony, whither now? Why fool? Who's fool, usher of idiots? You coxcomb. I have fooled too much. You were best be mad another while then. So I am stark mad. I have cause enough, and I could throw the full effects on thee and beat thee like a fury. Ah! Oh, no! Ah, 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 no! Do not! Do not! I shall not forbear the gentleman under the fool if you do. Alas, I saw through your fox skin before now. Oh, come, I can give you comfort. My mistress loves you. And there is as arrant a madman in the house as you are a fool, your rival, whom she loves not. If, after the mask, we can rid her of him, you earn her love, she says, and the fool shall ride her. <laughs> may I believe thee? <laughs> yes. Or you may choose whether you will or no. She's eased of him. I have a good quarrel on <laughs> Well, keep your old station yet and be quiet. <laughs> Tell her I will deserve her love. And you are like to have your desire. Down, 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 down. And then with a horse trick to kick Latona's forehead and break her bowstring. Oh, this is t'other counterfeit. I'll put him out of his humour. Sweet lady. Having now cast this counterfeit cover of a madman, I appear to your best judgment a true and faithful lover of your beauty. This is pretty well for a madman. Huh? What's that? Chide those perfections in you which made me imperfect. And discovered to the fool. Yours all are one beside himself, Franciscus. This madman will mend sure. Uh, what do you read, Sarah? Your destiny, sir. You'll be hanged for this trick, and another that I know. Art thou of counsel with thy mistress? Next her apron strings. Give me thy hand. So, if you love my mistress so well, as you have handled the matter here, you are like to be cured of your madness. And none but she can cure it. Well, I'll give you over then, and she shall cast your water next. Take for thy pains past. I shall deserve more, sir, I hope. My... Mistress loves you, but must have some proof of your love to her. Uh, there I meet my wishes. That will not serve. You must meet her enemy and yours. He's dead already. You will tell me that, and I parted but now with him. Show me the man. Aye, that's a right course now. See him before you kill him, in any case. And yet, it needs not go so far, neither. "'Tis but a fool that haunts the house, and my mistress, in the shape of an idiot. "'Bang but his fool's court well favouredly, and tis well.' "'Soundly, soundly. "'Only reserve him till the mask be passed. "'And if you find him not now on the dance yourself, I'll show you. "'In, in, my master. "'He handles him like a feather. "'Hey!' Down a down a down. Well said. Down a down a down. In a readiness, Lollio. Yes, sir. Away then and guide them in, Lollio. Yes, sir. Entreat your mistress to see this sight. Ah, now. Tis perfect. Well fit but once these strains, we shall have coin and credit for our pains. One struck, and yet she lies by it. Oh, my fears. This strumpet serves her own ends. Tis apparent now. Devours the pleasure with a greedy appetite, and never minds my honour or my peace. Makes havoc of my right. 
but she pays dearly for it. No trusting of her life with such a secret that cannot rule her blood to keep her promise. Beside, I have some suspicion of her faith to me, because I was suspected of my lord, and it must come from her. Hark! By my horrors, another clock strikes two. Where are you? De Flores. I... Is she not come from him yet? As I am a living soul, not... Sure, the devil hath sowed his itch within her. Who trust a waiting woman? I must trust somebody. Push. They are termagants, especially when they fall upon their masters and have their ladies' first fruits, their mad whelps. You cannot stave them off from game royal then. You are so harsh and hardy, ask no counsel, and I could have helped you to apothecary's daughter would have fallen off before eleven and thanked you too. This whore forgets herself. The rascal fares so well. Look, you're undone. The day star by this hand. See phosphorus playing yonder. Advise me now to fall upon some ruin. There is no counsel safe else. Peace I had now. For we must force a rising. There's no remedy. How? Take heed of that. Don't be you quiet, or else give over all. Prithee, I had done then. This is my reach. I'll set some part a fire of Diophantus chamber. How? Oh, fire, sir? That may endanger the whole house. You talk of danger when your fame's on fire. That's true. Do what thou wilt now. Push. I aim at a most rich success strikes all dead sure. The chimney being a fire, and some light parcels of the least danger in her chamber only. If Diophanta should be met by chance, then far from her lodging, which is now suspicious, it would be thought her fears and affright then drove her to seek for succour, if not seen or met at all, as that's the likeliest. For her own shame, she'll hasten towards her lodging. I'll be ready with a piece I charged as to her to cleanse the chimney. There, tis proper now, but she shall be the mark. I'm forced to love thee now, cause thou provised so carefully for my honour. Oh, Slid, it concerns the safety of us both, our pleasure and continuance. One word now, prithee, how for the servant? I'll dispatch them, some one way, some another, in the hurry for buckets, hooks, ladders. Fear not you. The deed shall find its time, and I've thought since upon a safe conveyance for the body too. How this fire purifies wit. Watch you your minute. The fear keeps my soul upon it. I cannot stray from it. The plot. Oh, the plot. Whose malice is thou put on? Oh, what hast thou takest away the light? Twixt that star and me? I tread thee not. Twas but a mist of conscience. All's clear again. Who's that? De Flores? Bless me, it slides by. The old thing haunts the house. It has left behind it a shivering sweat upon me. I'm afraid now. This night hath been so tedious. Oh, this strumpet. Had she a thousand lives, he should not leave her till he had destroyed the last. Listen, oh, my terrors. Three struck by St. Sebastian's. Already? How rare is that man's speed? How heartily he serves me. His face loathes one, but look upon his care who would not love him. The East is not more beauteous than his service. Away! Dispatch! Hooks! Buckets! Ladders! A twelve and arrange the works, my charge. The piece is ready. Oh, here's a man worth loving. Mother. Oh, you are a jewel. Pardon, fairy, madam. In troth, I was so well, I even forgot myself. You've made trim work. What? Hi, quickly to your chamber. Your reward follows you. Oh, I never made such a bargain. Oh, my dear Joanna. Alas, art thou risen too? I was coming, my absolute treasure. When I missed you, I could not choose but follow. Thou all sweetness, the fire is not so dangerous. Think you so, sir? I prithee, tremble not. Believe me, tis not. Bless my house and me. Uh, my lord, your father. Me! 
Whither goes that piece? To scour the chimney! Oh, well said, well said! That fellow's good on all occasions. A wondrous necessary man, my lord. He hath ready wit. He's worth them all, sir. Dog at a house of fire. I've seen him singed there now. Ha! There he goes! Oh, tis done. Come, sweet, to bed now. Alas, thou wilt get cold. Alas, the fear keeps that out. My heart will find no quiet till I hear how dire phantom my poor woman fares. It is her chamber, sir, her lodging chamber. How should the fire come there? As good a soul as ever lady countenanced. But in her chamber, negligent and heavy, she escaped a ruin twice. Twice? Strangely, twice, sir. Those sleepy sluts are dangerous in her house. Oh, oh God, poor virginity. Thou hast paid dearly for it. Bless us, what's that? A thing you all knew once. Diophant has burnt. My woman. Oh, my woman. Oh, now the flames are greedy of her. Oh. Burnt, uh. burnt, burnt to death, sir. Oh, my presaging soul. Not a tear more. I charge you by the last embrace I gave you in bed before this raised us. Uh, now you tie me. Were it my sister now, she gets no more. How now? All danger's past. You may now take your rest, my lord. The fire is thoroughly quenched. Oh, poor gentlewoman. How soon was she stifled? Good Floris, what is left of her in turn, and we as mourners all will follow her. I will entreat that honour to my servant, e'en of my lord himself. Command it, sweetness. Which of you spied the fire first? Twas I, madam. And took such pains in too. A double goodness. For well he were rewarded. He shall be. De Flores, call upon me. And upon me, sir. Rewarded, precious, here's a trick beyond me. I see in all bouts both of sport and wit, always a woman strives for the last hit. Mm. I cannot taste the benefits of life with the same relish I was wont to do. Man I grow weary of and hold his fellowship, a treacherous, bloody friendship, and because I am ignorant in whom my wrath should settle, I must think all men villains, and the next I meet, whoe'er he be, the murderer of my most worthy brother. Ah, what's he? Oh, the fellow that some call honest to Flores. But methinks honesty was hard bested to come there for a lodging, as if a queen should make her palace of a pest house. I find a contrariety in nature between that face and me. The least occasion would give me game upon him, yet he's so foul. One would scarce touch him with a sword he loved and made account of. So most deadly venomous, he would go near to poison any weapon that should draw blood on him. One must resolve never to use that sword again in fight in way of honest manhood. That strikes him. Some river must devour it. T'were not fit that any man should find it. What, again? He walks on purpose by, sure to choke me up, to infect my blood. My worthy noble lord. Does offer to come near and breathe upon me? Ah! A blow. Huh, yeah. Are you so prepared? I'd rather like a soldier die by the sword than like a politician by thy poison. <laughs> Hold, my lord, as you are honourable. All slaves that kill by poison are still cowards. I cannot strike. I see his brother's wounds fresh bleeding in his eye as in a crystal. I will not question this. I know you're noble. I take my injury with thanks given, sir. <sighs> like a wise lawyer, and as a favour will wear it for the worthy hand that gave it. Why this from him that yesterday appeared so strangely loving to me? Oh, but instinct is of a subtler strain. Guilt must not walk so near his lodge again. He came near me now. All league with mankind I renounce forever, till I find this murderer not so much as common courtesy, but I'll lock up, for in the state of ignorance I live in, a brother may salute his brother's murderer, and wish good speed to the villain in a greeting. Noble Piracquo, pray keep on your way, sir, I have nothing to say to you. Comfort bless you, sir. I have forsworn compliment, in troth I have, sir. As you are merely man, I have not left a good wish on you, nor any here. Unless you be so far in love with grief, you will not part from one any terms. We bring that news will make a welcome for us. 
What news can that be? Throw no scornful smile upon the zeal I bring you. Tis worth more, sir. Two of the chiefest men I kept about me, I hide not from the law or your just vengeance. Huh? To give your peace more ample satisfaction, thank this discoverer, Signor Alibius. If you bring that calm, name but the manner I shall ask forgiveness in for that contemptuous smile upon you. I'll perfect it with reverence that belongs unto a sacred altar. Good sir, rise. Why, now you overdo as much of this hand as you fell short of t'other speak, Olivia's. Uh, Twas my wife's fortune, as she is most lucky at a discovery, to find out lately, within our hospital of fools and madmen, two counterfeits slipped into these disguises, their names, Franciscus and Antonio. Both mine, sir, and I ask no favour for them. Now that which draws suspicion to their habits, the time of their disguisings agrees justly with the day of the murder. Oh, blessed revelation. Nay more, nay more, sir, I'll not spare mine own in way of justice. They both feigned a journey to Briamata, and so wrought out their leaves. My love was so abused in it. Time's too precious to run in waste now. You have brought a peace the riches of five kingdoms could not purchase. Be my most happy conduct, I thirst for them. Like subtle lightning will I wind about them and melt their marrow in them. Alcimera, your confidence, I'm sure, is now of proof. The prospect from the garden has showed enough for deep suspicion. The black mask that so continually was worn upon condemns the face for ugly air to be seen. A despite to him and so seeming bottomless. Touch it home then. Tis not a shallow probe can search this ulcer soundly. I fear you'll find it full of corruption. Tis fit I leave you. She meets you opportunely from that walk. She took the back door and is parting with her. Did my fate wait for this unhappy stroke at my first sight of woman? Alcimera. How do you? How do I? Alas, how do you? You look not well. You read me well enough. I am not well. Not well, sir. Is it in my power to better you? Yes. Nay, then you're cured again. Pray, resolve me one question, lady. If I can. None can, so sure. Are you honest? <laughs> that's a broad question, my lord. But that's not a modest answer, my lady. Do you laugh? My doubts are strong upon me. Tis innocence that smiles, and no rough brow can take away the dimple in her cheek. Say I should strain a tear to fill the vault, which would you give the better faith to? To but hypocrisy of a sadder colour, but the same stuff, neither your smiles nor tears shall move or flatter me from my belief. You are a whore. What a horrid sound it hath. It blasts a beauty to deformity. Upon what face soe'er that breath falls, it strikes it ugly. Oh, you have ruined what you can ne'er repair again. I'll all demolish and seek out truth within you. If there be any left, let your sweet tongue prevent your heart's rifling there. I'll ransack and tear out my suspicion. You may, sir, tis an easy passage. Yet, if you please, show me the ground whereon you lost your love. My spotless virtue may but tread on that before I perish. Unanswerable. Ground you cannot stand on. You fall down beneath all grace and goodness when you set your ticklish heel on. There was a visor. Oh, that cunning face, and that became you. How impudence in triumph rides upon it. How comes this tender reconcilement else twixt you and your despite, your rancorous loathing to Flores, he that your eye was sore at sight of? He's now become your arms supporter, your lips saint. Is there the cause? Worse, your lust's devil, your adultery. Would any but yourself say that twould turn him to a villain? Twas witnessed by the counsel of your bosom, Diaphanta. Is your witness dead, then? It is to be feared. It was the wages of her knowledge, poor soul. She lived not long after the discovery. Then hear a story of not much less horror than this your false suspicion is beguiled with. 
To your bed's scandal I stand up innocence, which even the guilt of one black other deed will stand proof of. Your love has made me a cruel murderess, uh. a bloody one. I have kissed poison foot, stroked a serpent, that thing of hate, worthy in my esteem of no better employment, and him most worthy to be so employed I caused to murder that innocent Paraquo, having no better means than that worst to assure yourself to me. Oh, the place itself there since has crying been for vengeance, the temple where blood and beauty first unlawfully fired their devotion and quenched the right one. It was in my fears at first to have it now, oh, thou art all deformed. Forget not, sir, it for your sake was done. Shall greater dangers make the less welcome? Oh, thou shouldst have gone a thousand leagues about to have avoided this dangerous bridge of blood. Here we are lost. Remember, I am true unto your bed. The bed's itself a charnel. The sheets shrouds the murdered carcasses. It must ask pause. What I must do in this meantime, you shall be my prisoner only. Enter my closet. I'll be your keeper yet. Oh, in what part of this sad story shall I first begin? Noble Alcimero. Ha. Ah, this same fellow has put me in. De Flores, I can tell you news, sir. My wife has her commended to you. That's news indeed, my lord. I think she would commend me to the gallows if she could. She ever loved me so well. I thank her. What's this blood upon your band, de Flores? Blood? No, sure t'was washed since. Since when, man? Since t'other day I got a knock in a sword and dagger school. I think tis out. Yes, tis almost out, but tis perceived, though. I had forgot my message. This is it. What price goes murder? How, sir? I ask you, sir. My wife's behindhand with you, she tells me. For a brave, bloody blow you gave for her sake upon Paraquo. Upon? Twas quite through him, sure. Has she confessed it? As sure as death to both of you. And much more than that. It could not be much more. T'was but one thing, and that is she's a whore. I could not choose but follow, oh, cunning devils! How should blind men know you from fair-faced saints? Let me go to her, oh, sir. You shall go to her. Peace, you crying crocodile! Your sounds are heard! Take your prey to you, get you into her, sir! I'll be your panda now! Rehearse again your scene of lust that you may be perfect when you shall come to act it to the black audience where howls and gnashing shall be music to you. Clip your adulterers freely, tis the pilot will guide you to the Murray Mortuum where you will sink to fathoms bottomless. Oh, El Samero, I have a wonder for you. No, sir, tis I. I have a wonder for you. I have suspicion near as proof itself for Paraquo's murder. Sir, I have proof beyond suspicion for Paraquo's murder. Beseech you, hear me. These two have been disguised ere since the deed was done. I have two other that were more close disguised than your two could be ere since the deed was done. You will hear me. These, mine servants. Hear me. Those nearer than your servants that shall acquit them and prove them guiltless. That may be done with easy truth, sir. How is my cause bandied through your delays? Tis urgent in blood and calls for haste. Give me a brother, alive or dead, alive a wife with him, if dead for both, a recompense for murder and adultery. Ah! What? <laughs> Hark, tis coming to you. Oh, horrid sounds of these unfortunate twins of mischief. Oh. Here we are. If you have any more to say to us, speak quickly. I shall not give you the hearing out. I am so stout yet. And so I think that broken rib of mankind, a host of enemies entered my citadel, could not amaze like this. Joanna, Beatrice, Joanna. Oh, come not near me, sir. I shall defile you. I am that of your blood was taken from you for your better health. Look no more upon it, but cast it to the ground regardlessly. Let the common sewer take it from distinction. 
beneath the stars, upon your meteor ever hung my fate, amongst things corruptible. I ne'er could pluck it from him. My loathing was profit to the rest, but ne'er believed. Mine honour fell with him. And now my life. Your Samero, I am a stranger to your bed. Your bed was cousined on the nuptial night for which your false bride died. <laughs> Diaphanta. Yes. And the while I coupled with your mate at Barley Break. <laughs> now we are left in hell. We are all there. It circumscribes us here. I loved this woman in spite of her heart. <laughs> her love I earned out of Piraquo's murder. Huh? My brother's murderer? Yes, and her honor's prize was my reward. I thank life for nothing but that pleasure. It was so sweet to me that I have drunk up all, uh, left none behind for any man to pledge me. Horrid villain! Keep life in him for further tortures! No, I can't prevent you. Here's my penknife. Still, it is but one thread more. And now just cut. Make haste, Joanna. By that token to thee. Canst not forget, so let me put in mind I would not go to leave thee far behind. Forgive me, Alcimero. All forgive. Tis time to die when tis a shame to live. Oh, my name is entered now in that record, where till this fatal hour twas never read. Let it be blotted out, let your heart loosed, and it can never look you in the face. Nor tell a tale behind the back of life to your dishonour. Justice hath so right the guilty hit that innocence is quit by proclamation and may joy again. Oh. Sir, you are sensible of what truth hath done. Tis the best comfort that your grief can find. Oh. Sir, I am satisfied. My injuries lie dead before me. I can exact no more unless my soul will loose and could o'ertake those black fugitives that are fled from thence to take a second vengeance. But there are wraths deeper than mine. Tis to be feared about them. What an opaqueous body had that moon that last changed on us. Here's beauty changed to ugly whoredom. Here, servant obedience to a master sin, imperious murder. I, a supposed husband, changed embraces with wantonness, but that was paid before. Your change has come, too, from an ignorant wrath to knowing friendship. Are there any more on uh, Yes, sir. I was changed, too, from a little ass as I was, to a great fool, as I am, and had like to have been changed to the gallows, but that you know my innocence always excuses me. I was changed from a little wit to be stark mad, for almost to the same purpose. Your change, husband, is still behind, yeah. but deserve best your transformation. You are a jealous coxcomb, keep schools of folly, and teach your scholars how to break your own head. I see all apparent wife, and will change now into a better husband. And never keep scholars that shall be wiser than myself. Sir, you have yet a son's duty living. Please you accept it. Let that your sorrow, as it goes from your eye, go from your heart. Man and his sorrow at the grave must part. In The Changeling by Thomas Middleton and William Rowley, Beatrice Joanna was played by Anna Maidley and De Flores by Zubin Vala. Vermandero was played by Nicky Henson, Al Somero by Simon Muller, Jasperino by Nigel Hastings, and Diaphanta by Liz Richardson. Tommaso de Paracuo was Alex Hassel, and Alonso de Paracuo, Alex Blake. Lolio was played by Stephen Hogan, Alibius by Philip Fox, 
Isabella by Catherine Bailey, Antonio by Piers Weiner, Franciscus by Joseph Cohn Cole, and Pedro by Rhys Jennings. Technical presentation was by Martha Littlehales. The Changeling was adapted for radio and directed by Jeremy Mortimer. And next week's drama on three is The Hairy Ape by Eugene O'Neill. That's at the same time, 8 o'clock next Sunday evening. This is BBC Radio 3, where it's now 10 o'clock and time for the Sunday feature. The singer-songwriter Billy Bragg presents a reappraisal of Victorian Music Hall and reveals that it was, in fact, Britain's first pop music, an urban folk culture in which raucous song vied with cutthroat commercialism. It's easy to feel nostalgic about Music Hall, but was it really the good old days? Sorry, the Lord Mary.